Hello, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm going to be recording the next several weeks worth of uh, uh, kind of question and answer roundups simply because we're in an area where the internet is just miserable. And after multiple failed attempts to broadcast live, I'm just going to kind of cut to the chase and make this easy. Um, first of all, I wanted to give a big shout out to Aaron Jester. I was in L.A. Uh, for the last four days and uh, doing a couple of speaking engagements and got to see my good friend Michael James Daly. We did a uh, mobility master class together Friday, which was just a ball. Um, we're working on getting the recording squared away. Of course, we're, we had some sort of technical difficulty with the uh, um, sound, but we'll have that up and available on the shop pretty soon. But Mike went through and demonstrated three different massage techniques that you can do at home, and then a little bit about uh, active range of stretching, and then we talked about some other things that you can consider as well. But we just had a great time. Um, it, it, and Michael is just such a uh, wealth of information. He and I worked together for golly, almost 10 years at Sundog Cat Moon, my first practice, my second practice. And um, he's just a, a wonderful human being. And if you're in the LA area, check him out. Uh, he is just so talented and is has been such a, a great asset to uh, to pet owners because he knows, you know, he, he wrote the notes for clients for me for that many years. So he knows so much of what I say to people. And the wonderful thing was hanging out with Aaron and uh, Mongo and Gozer. <laughs> Just love those guys. I, I really miss the pit bull uh, energy, and, and it was great to be around that and meet your friends, Aaron, that, um, that are into teaching people how to be responsible pit bull owners. That's such an important thing. So a uh, couple of questions uh, popped up. So April was asking about kidney beans. And yes, they are the highest beans in lectins. Um, and lectins are anti-nutrients. And, and this actually segues nicely into the next thing I'm going to talk with you about. N lectins can really be a big problem if you have GI sensitivity to them. And uh, by cooking slowly and then by adding the calcium to the pot of food as you cook, you actually get rid of the vast majority of them. Now, having said that, if you or your pet have a real sensitivity to lectins, it's still not very much fun. And um, I can attest to that. I can eat a couple of tablespoons of beans a day and that's about it. Uh, but the upside is, is that if you can tolerate them, um, they're an awesome source of nutrition as far as the amount of fiber they provide and they're great at feeding uh, the, the bugs so they have wonderful prebiotic fibers as well. So as, as uh, May correctly mentioned, uh, the cooking takes out most of them, the calcium helps as well. You can certainly switch in other beans. So to, you can use things like lentils which are extremely uh, non-reactive, uh, pinto beans, navy beans, fava beans, whatever you would like. The reason the recipe calls for kidney beans is that they are kidney shaped. And so in traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, they are considered to tonify the kidney. And so we want to keep the jing or essence as high as possible through postnatal jing. And um, they also are red and so they are blood tonics and they drain damp and uh, help to transform phlegm. And so in Chinese medicine, phlegm is kind of what we think of it as, as far as mucus and things of that nature. But it's also the weird stuff like, um, you know, for us at four o'clock and three or four o'clock in the afternoon, you get that slump and uh, that's considered to be phlegm misting the mind. And then lymphoma is considered to be a phlegm nodule, like pomas are phlegm nodules, things of that nature. But all beans in general share that a purpose of, um, of draining damp and transforming phlegm. So the reason I said that was a great segue into the next thing I'm going to talk about is that Lolly posted the FDA report about the uh, grain-free foods and 
I'm going to kind of pop that up on the screen here so you guys can take a look at it with me. Um, she, the uh, link is there in her post, which was awesome, and thank you, Lolly, for putting that up. And it's a fairly complete report and all this good stuff. So, you know, here's the number of cases in 2018 and uh, 197 so far in 19 through the end of April. And then the total numbers of dogs and cats, which I thought was interesting, uh, and the numbers of deaths. And the dogs, that's really a horrible number, 119 out of 515 cases reported. Having said that, they do go on to mention that, um, you know, if your dog died and you're pissed off, you're probably going to be more likely to report it. And they've also observed a reporting bias for specific breeds because of social media groups and that are saying like, hey, this is happening. If you're having an issue, be aware of it, but also report it to the FDA because a lot of times your vet won't. And this is the truth. So what was interesting to me is, you know, here's the distribution of cases. Um, and it really was pretty wide open across all the breeds. And you'll notice Goldie's account for 95 and then um, mixed breeds are 62. So this isn't a breed specific issue. I think what it is is a food specific issue. Now what was interesting to me, and I'll kind of scroll down a little bit further here, is they also said, okay, it was almost all dry food with some other, you know, forms. Um, and then they listed out the various um, brands that were associated with it. And they all, you know, and, and so what I was shocked at is that a lot of it was a Kana. Um, so that's, that was really interesting. It's considered to be one of the best ones. And it is supposed to have less carb in it than uh, the rest of them. And then here's Origin, which is that brand's more carb intense diet. Now, so they talked about, okay, it's grain free. So that means it didn't contain corn, soy, wheat, rice, barley, or other grains, but they contain peas, lentils, chickpeas, beans, and potatoes, including sweet potatoes. So again, um, What they're not saying is, okay, these are grain-free, but what are the macronutrient ratios of these diets? And I may be wrong with the exception of Akana, but again, all of these brands are 60 to 70% carbohydrate. And so we just talked about the fact that, yeah, kidney beans have, um, are high in lectins and they are anti-nutrients. And so even if they are cooked, but your diet is 70% bean of some description, and lentils are much, much lower, um, and peas are as well, there's, you're not supposed to eat that many beans. I mean, really, come on. Uh, so here it is, your, your body is presented with so many anti-nutrients, and um, there is sufficient protein in all of these diets. Dogs can eat, uh, enough taurine and, and it's or they can manufacture taurine I'm saying this backwards they can manufacture taurine from other amino acids so as long as there is sufficient protein in the diet they should be able to not have this issue as a, as a taurine deficiency um, cats they have to eat that uh, sufficient amount of taurine every day or they will develop dilative cardiomyopathy and this happened in the uh, late 80s early 90s uh, when Friskies was um, not putting enough taurine in their foods. And so that one of my cardiology professors was like, wait, they're all eating the same brand of food. And they're like, well, what's in the food? And then they realized, oh, oh, these are taurine deficient cats. And we add the taurine back in and everybody got better. The thing is, is that's not necessarily happening with these dogs. So there's something else going on. And I have an idea that it is either related to, again, to anti-nutrients or something else that this excessive amount of carbohydrate has triggered in the body. Um, they are, some of them reverse with taurine, but many of these dogs do not, sadly. So Lolly, again, thank you for putting this up. Um, I think the, the, you know, they're still not asking the right questions about, well, why is this happening? So that's my two cents worth, and you can uh, hash that out. 
Uh, Mary was asking about veggies and uh, how to rotate them and that kind of stuff. And Mary just, you know, you got great advice from everybody, from, from our crock pet pros. Um, so pick one or two of each category per batch. Uh, she was also asking about what to substitute for carrots. I have seen rarely a carrot sensitivity. You can substitute things that are orange fleshed squashes like the butternut squash, um, acorns, things of that nature, and then pumpkins. And then you definitely would not want to use those as your veggies and pick, you know, more summer squashes, squashes like zucchini and things of that nature. Um, they all are higher carbohydrate, uh, but again, cooked, all is good because uh, the fiber is there to kind of offset that uh, sugar punch. And May, you're correct in saying that sweet potatoes are a starch. Um, and somebody was asking about if anybody's used teff, but I think teff is a great idea. And then interestingly enough, wheat has been out of most commercial dog food for over a decade. So if you can find one of the more European varietals of wheat, which are lower in gluten, that's not a terrible thing to consider either. Now, let's see, next thing was, uh, Kathy was talking about her Pomeranian with kidney disease, and he's was eating Crock-Pet really well for a while and all of a sudden not so much. So first thing I'd say, Kathy, is make sure that the kidney disease is stable and there's not something else going on. Sometimes over time, um, brassica veggies can be an issue as far as digestive issues and then also beans. So I would try backing, backing those things out and, and see what uh, happens and see if that makes him a little happier about eating. And then the other thing as Aaron suggested is you can use sardines or other fish treats to kind of top the diet and uh, keep them eating. But do make sure that there's not a health issue going on. If you're hearing more tummy rumbling, um, you know, I was talking with somebody the other day that their pup's uh, liver enzymes, and maybe it was you, Kathy, had written in uh, about this, but the liver enzymes had increased recently. Make sure that the gallbladder is okay. That's where ultrasound can be really helpful because uh, you, your veterinarian will be able to see either gallbladder sludging or hopefully not a uh, biliary mucosal. Both of those are relatively easy to deal with and this is where I would use a medication called Ursodiol along with um, milk thistle, liposomal glutathione, and things of that nature to help move the uh, uh, garbage out of the out of the liver, so to speak. And then the last question I saw was about allergy testing, and I think April was asking about, you know, whether you have to get a blood test or whether you can use Glacier Peak Holistics. And many of you have had experience with Glacier Peaks, and some of you with NutriScan. After trying multiple allergy tests, and I used Dr. Dodd's NutriScan test in practice, I found that Glacier Peak Holistics test was as good a roadmap as any of them, and often somewhere between a third and a quarter of the cost of the other ones. Um, and it tests for a lot more things. So as far as food antigens, um, environmental issues, and then in, um, uh, chemicals and things of that nature. So um, I, I really like that test, and I love the fact that it's a hair and saliva test. Um, so you, you, know, you get the kit, you send in uh, some hair, which you comb, comb off of your pet into a little baggie, and then swab the cheeks with um, the organic cotton swabs they send along. Uh, you, you just mail it to them, and uh, results typically come back in a week to 10 days. Uh, once you've mailed it off. They are great folks to work with. Um, I love using that test to help design diets and help folks kind of uh, steer away from other issues. So if you're having allergy issues, I think it's a great way to go. Um, remember, it is a biofeedback test. It is not an antigen test, which is what um, uh, or an immune test. And so many, the veterinary tests tend to use different um, immunoglobulins, either IgA, IgM, to determine if your pet's allergic or not allergic. Again, you know, the NutriScan test I found helpful, but frankly, um, I found it to be misleading. We would try a protein and the dog would react to it. 
and then we'd try another protein that it was supposed to be sensitive to and it would be fine. So again, I think it's a very inexpensive way to get, uh, to get some answers and get a handle on where to start working with food. So that's what I've got for you this week. Um, I will uh, be checking in on the area a little bit uh, later in the week. I'm, just so you all know what's going on, because you're my, my uh, kind of core group, um, and that Mary Jo got to come in and go past and say hello to everybody. <laughs> um, so we're, um, I'm trying to do a couple of things. I've been doing this business now for <sighs> since 2013, and uh, it, I love it, but it frankly has, I've put, a, I've put almost a quarter of a million dollars into this business, and I have taken out dime zero. And Jenna's been working with me and supporting, and so what I'm having to do is um, really cut down my expenses so I can actually make some money out of this and make it reasonable for me to keep running the business. Um, and so doing that, I need to be cautious of my time and energy. So we'll, uh, I'll be checking in on the group a little bit less frequently. Uh, but what I'll be doing each week is somehow getting you a video up answering your questions. Uh, and because I love working with you guys, you do so much stuff, you teach me so much stuff, you help each other, and I love seeing this community grow. So many thanks to all of you and blessings to you all as well. So we'll keep working with you. Jen Jenna will be kind of in the background helping to write stuff because I am outstanding at writing the longest run-on sentences in the universe. So that's what I've got for you this week. I'll put a link to the uh, Glacier Peak Holistics test down in the comments and um, also to the Mobility Masterclass. It's going to take us probably to the end of the week to get the recording up because we had some issues with Mike's audio. So we'll get that uh, sorted out and back up, but that was a tremendous amount of information. So until next week... Uh, Take good care of yourselves. Give your pups a big hug for me. And remember, your pet's best health starts in the bowl. Many thanks.